All right, you guys, Community Conversations, Think Bigger Podcast. I'm here with Matthew Rodriguez, a.k.a. Rodri. With a full name. Wow. <laughs> with the H-E-W. Nice. Uh, you know what, Matt? Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, this is a conversation that, that I've been wanting to have for a long time, and I think it's going to be really important. There's a lot of fun, but there's a lot of history. Sure. Um, aside from being an enthusiast, it's turned into over the last 20 years, you playing a very real role in the industry that most people just see sure. and are a part of, but they're not behind the scenes, right? right? right. So we're going to get to that. But I mean, um, we were talking about it earlier, the, uh, the amount of time we've known each other. A long time. Right? Yeah, I was going through some old photos on a, uh, like a backup drive, uh, I think the night before last. And okay. There's, there's some old stuff from... The first period shoot. Oh, oh, eight. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, mm, I've known him way longer than that. Yeah. So I was looking for some other stuff. I found uh, one or two pictures of a blue Civic. Oh, my hatch, yeah. yeah and that was even further back. I was yep. Like, yeah, it's been a long time. It has been. I used um, to just kind of see you around at like a couple different shows. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how we met. I know it was in San Diego. It at, was. Uh, Coors. Coors Amphitheater. Yeah, and I remember I liked your car. And I was like, oh, wow, there's, you know, this is a clean car. And I remember you had, <clears throat> excuse me, you had... Like uh, Alcantara, was it? Uh, roof liner? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting. I think I asked you about it, and, and you seemed really cool. Okay. And then um, next time I saw you, uh, we talked for a while. Next time I saw you was a different show, and I want to I say it might have been, um, is that Cal Palace? Is that, what was that place called? Where? It's like... Uh, In Pomona? Pomona. I think, oh, I think Show was, Off Classics? I think it might have been there. And then like all the AM7 guys were there. Okay, that was 2005. Okay. That was when... You were parked outside. Uh, I was with all the AM7 guys and uh, a couple other people. We were outside. Okay, and I'm about 90% sure that was uh, Ken's thing, uh, Ken Miyoshi's yep. event, Show Off Classics in 05. I think was the EG on white MF10Ls or yep. was it... It was on yep. MF10Ls. I think so, yeah. Okay, so maybe before 05. Um, but it was back then. I remember I saw you. I was like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. Yeah. We met, did you know, I remember? You did. You totally did. And we, okay. You know, we were just chatting for a while. I was like, oh, that guy's cool. So I from see. there, we just kind of always ran into each other. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know what, man? It's funny that you bring that up because I actually didn't... Um, I don't know if I'm just getting old, bro, but in all honesty... You are, yeah. Go ahead. Fair enough. Continue. <laughs> uh, in all honesty, I did not remember anything that you just said. I was going to bring up how long we've known each other, and I, I remember San Diego. Yep. But you know what? It's weird because, okay, yes, I remember Coors Amphitheater, my my blue hatch, because a lot of people listening think of me as the prelude, prelude guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as much as I appreciate that, I also kind of don't like it because that's... You just went back almost 20 years, yeah. and my first car was not a Prelude. I've had my hatch. That was the first car featured in Honda Tuning. When you and guys were Prelude, it was like a daily driver. It, it was. a cruiser. And yeah, was dude, like, I drove... Dude, I probably put 100,000 miles on it in two years, right? I remember you brought it to a, uh, a meet at JHP. Okay. And I was like, what the hell is this thing? You're like, this is my new daily. You had... You had spoon seats in it, or oh, uh, the vision one. Vi- vision, yeah, same thing, right? Yeah. So you had the seats in there, and then I think it was lowered. Was it the burgundy color already? No, 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 no. It was black. It was still stock, and I was like, "Damn, this is your daily now." Yeah. Like, I, I didn't see. I didn't see you driving this because you always had the the hatch. The hatch so it yeah. Just... So the people who've known me the longest know me as as a, someone who is an EG guy, right. and um, so when you bring up Coors Amphitheater, I remember the event. It was o two or o three. I had the, the hatch was blue. I think I was still on MF Ten Ls, and we met. Okay, but I don't remember the what you the story you just told. I don't remember. I have, that. A, I have a very strange memory. Like all, and, and my wife always mentions it too. I'll remember very specific things, but then if she tells me, "Hey, pick this up on your way home," done. <laughs> don't remember it at all. I'm like, I don't remember that. So yeah. So so um, I don't remember ever having a conversation with you about suede or Alcantara interior in my car. But a lot of people, which you remember, was the, in, the, the car was actually very well-rounded for yep. the time. Yep. Do you, did I have the Del, uh, the Del Sol seats in it at that time? You may have. I, because, I can't recall because I, I had Del Sol seats at the time. Yeah. So maybe that's what maybe. drew me in. Because what ended up happening was is I, you know, we were reading or hearing about how low Del Sol seats fit in an EG, right? When I put them in, I was like, yo, this is amazing. But what I did was, which is... I guess how you ended up seeing the headliner was I did the uh, the seats, 
the doors, right. the whole interior. Right. And so the seat was like vinyl, but with the stripe in the middle, it was like black on black right. with the headliner. And it was like a very classy looking, for me, what I thought. Um, and so it's interesting that you bring that up. But I mean, that show was 02, 03, and then Classics was 05. So we're, we're talking 15 years. But my, uh, my first memory of actually, uh, which is here you go with the weird memory, is my first memory, for whatever reason, is you, your EG, and your garage somewhere in San Diego. Yeah. And I don't have the foggiest, because that was clearly, I don't think that was the first time, you said the first time you met me was in Coors Amphitheater. Yep. All the way in uh, Chula Vista, yeah. right? Okay, so then clearly this is not the first time. But somehow I met you at your apartment, and you opened the garage, and you're, you have your uh, uh, burgundy-ish red wine-colored EG, and we were, we were going to go somewhere. And you were wiping it down, and I specifically remember that you were using a, towel. Uh, a regular towel. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember saying to you, Matt, like... Why? Why are you wiping I, your car with that so, such a rough towel? Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Oh, and you that do? Was my one car garage. I was in uh, yes. uh, Carmel Mountain. Carmel so, Mountain. Yeah, yeah. So um, the reason that I was doing that and neglecting my paint, it, it was uh, it was actually pretty pretty like maybe like eight months in or something. Okay. It's because I had an uh, uh, an appointment with uh, I think Mike G's detailer to get the <laughs> to get the whole car like completely cut oh off, cut and buff like, properly because yes. it was dry yeah and so um, that was the plan and then so you um, just didn't care at that moment didn't really matter yeah um so um after that guy did his work oh my god it's like a brand new car it yeah was crazy yeah I, I have no, I've never seen the process before and he's like well let me just do a little section you can see what yeah. it is because it's gonna cost a lot right. So he starts sandpapering like the quarter panel. I was like, oh, so this detailer also color sanded. Yeah, the whole the whole nine. Ah. And I was like, damn, this, this is pretty serious, you know. And in my head, I'm like, shit, like he's doing that one area. I have to do the whole car now. Yes. No what. Um, so he started doing that area. It looked great, and I was like, just do it. So, Dude, how much was it? Um, I want to say it was like four hundred. Which at that time, that's very, very that's a good. lot of money back then. It, it is a lot of money, but it was actually for the amount of work that he did. It was like eight hours of work for sure. Um, it was a it was a deal through my G, and it was actually really good. So. No, no. So for now, detailers who would there are many detailers who will cut, uh, buff. They will paint correct. They will coat. They will do all these things, but they don't color sand. Right. The ones who color sand and do everything, dude, that's a two thousand yeah, dollar job. For sure. It was it was cheap, and I remember going to the ATM and like, God, I yeah, I don't want to spend this money, but. It was worth it. It was totally worth it. You know, okay, so we're going to we're gonna come right back to this nostalgic kind of like history line. But, you know, and we're going to do this. It's, we're going to go off on tangents because of the, how, much, how much time we've known each other. But there are going to be a lot of people who are listening mm -hmm. who just flat out have no idea who you are. Oh, okay. and, and your personality, your low key, as, as long as you've been around and we have all these stories that we've touched on and we're going to touch on, just take a moment and just... Tell the listeners, like, what your current job title and in, in description is and how that has turned into that from when you started in the magazine. Well, so right now I'm the content director for the Super Shoot Network. Yes. Um, but I also work with the Low Rider Network as well. Yes. Um, I just sort of, like, morphed into that. Um, okay, for you guys listening, Super Street Network is Super Street Honda Tuning Name Import Tuner. And um, modified European car. Modified European car. I mean, they can modify, but European car. Um, and you are the the content director. Yeah. So basically, it's like a manager, right? Like, yes. I, I don't really take titles too well, but it, it, it's like a manager. You sort of just managing the network. So everything from the budget to uh, marketing to event planning. Yes. It's just everything, right? It's yes. Just everything. Uh, but I also do still shoot a little bit. Yes. I write, I write a lot. Um, and then I, I do a little bit of DIY stuff too. Okay, so you guys, so uh, he talked about that, the Lowrider Network. What we were talking about, for, and there are going to be people, people who don't even know what any of that is. Sure. That is media. So these are all existing or formerly existing print magazines, most of which were effectively the largest for our niche. Yep. And now it, it, they've segued into uh, digital online entities. But... Um, you, you talked about, obviously, you write a lot. A lot of copywriting, a lot of article writing, sure. D, uh, DIY stuff for your personal projects, which we are going to get to. But it all started off with photography. Yes. Okay? So to, to jump back into this realm of time, we're talking about 01, 02, 03, 04, 
you also picked up a camera. I did. Right? Yeah. And it ended up becoming, I mean, it led to where you are now sure. in this managerial kind of like upper level management right. for these names that we grew up loving. Sure. Right? Yeah. Sport Compact Car, Turbo, Honda Tuning, Super <clears throat> Street, Import Tuner were these magazines that have just, they were just there. And they were part of like the, the, the culture, sure. the community, or disseminated information in the way that it that was done before was via print, right? But um before forums and before forums. Yeah. So how did you end up deciding uh, and what year did you end up deciding to pick up a camera for yourself? So I think it might have been like oh three ish okay. or four. I had a roommate actually the garage where you remember me using sandpaper to wipe down my car <laughs> in the form of a towel. Um I had a roommate, uh he bought a little Canon digital camera. I had no idea what it was. A point and shoot? Yeah, point and shoot. Yeah. yeah I had no idea what it was. Um, I was like really <laughs> hyperactive on uh, Honda Tech, the yes. form, right? And so, um, you know, I saw these guys posting pictures of their friends' cars. I was like, well, you know, my friends have cool cars too. Yes. I, I want to share this stuff. So I borrowed it and uh, just started taking photos with it. And uh, I was terrible, of course, because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Of course. Um, but, you know, over time I started to kind of figure it out. And then um, I started getting into like um, trying to do like night photography, yeah, like, you know, extended exposures and stuff like that. And then um, I just got completely addicted to it. I loved it. So, so you would just play with settings yep. and and learn, right? Figure it out. Yeah. Okay, but when did you pick up your first DSLR? Um, so it been oh five. Um, that was when I first got like an actual assignment. To shoot something for a magazine. Yes. And so I borrowed a DSLR because I didn't, I didn't have sure. money for it. I borrowed it from Loy. Loy yep. Salon with Sport Car Motion. He had just purchased one. And uh, he was like, yeah, you can just borrow it. So I borrowed it for like a couple weeks. Yeah. Played with it. Did the shoot. And then um, I think like after I got that first paycheck um, from that shoot, I bought a DSLR. You bought your own. Yeah. Okay. And at what point in this process, I mean, you just referenced your first paid gig. Yes. And it was 05. Yes. Okay, but when in that whole process did you decide to come up with, and only the older heads are going to remember this, uh, Rodrez shot? Oh, man. Um, somewhere between picking up the camera in 03, yeah. and then somewhere between that and like 05. The reason that I got the gig, the, the original gig, yeah. uh, if you want to call it that, um, I was taking... A lot of photos of friends' cars put in a Honda Tech, but I was like basically putting it like in magazine form. Right? Yes. So I read a little bit yes. about it, show like the interior, exhaust, whatever. Um, and then since that name I already had on the forums, I was yes. like, just Roger Shaw. So, yeah. so yeah, you, you you know, that was your name. Your... It made sense. And then everyone was doing like, um, they still do like, you know, Big Mike built or, yes. you know, this built or that yes. built. And I was like, well, this is more of the photography realm. Yeah, so, yeah. Roger shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the guys who were, 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 obviously a lot of people who are listening are going to remember that. And uh, you know what? The the A way to see some of that, because the hashtag does exist on Instagram. Jeez. It does exist just because people are, are, you know, I, I mean, I've hashtagged it a couple times on throwback photos. Yeah. Um, so if you guys, for the for those of you who uh, are, are able to um, look up the tag Rodrez shot. It's R O D R E Z S H O T and you'll you'll see a little bit, <laughs> you'll see a little bit of nostalgia there. So um, you picked up a camera, yep. you shot, looked terrible. Let me try this, turn this knob, look up what this setting means, right? It turns into a paid gig. Um, and this is about that same time that we are are meeting, right? So sure. that that story about when I came to visit you Open the garage. You're wiping down your EG. That was the same time. Yeah, where I, was already, you... I was already kind of immersed in it. Yeah, okay. As a part time gig. So on a side note, do you happen to remember what we were doing and where we went or were doing that day that made me come over there? It was a meet of some sort, but I I don't remember. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Okay, but but you remember that whole thing yep. that we talked about, but for what we did before or after, you don't remember either. Because I don't. I, don't. I, I don't. cannot remember. I don't remember if we met up with Jeremy. I don't know if we met up with anyone else. I really have no idea. No, that's probably. We were probably, a right? Big group, yeah. Um, but, you, you know, and, and the other thing is, is I used to be in San Diego a lot. Yeah. And Always I don't, I actually don't really remember why. I don't, uh, I mean, I knew people. Sure. But San Diego's far. It is. From... Where I was coming from, yeah. you know, you're talking about. Um, I would do this maybe weekly, and yeah. it's 110 miles one way. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you would actually stay stay with us. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, 
Maybe an auto fashion. Yep, yep. Whatever. So speaking of auto fashion, um, uh, that I wanted to get to that. So we, you, you brought up classics. That was 05. And then, so my hatch. Uh, you shot my EG. Yes. For Honda Tuning Magazine, 2005. Uh, at the back and surrounding areas of auto fashion's yep. first location. Yep. That was the first time I met Freddie. Shout out to Freddie. Um, and I remember, uh, I remember that shoot in the middle of the street, et cetera. And you were like duck down, yeah. right? So that you could shoot it and look like I'm not in there. I don't, know how, I don't know how to Photoshop you out. Correct. So I was like, dude, you got to duck down because I don't, I don't have the ability to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also we were blocking a main street. So a couple yeah. of times it was like, hey, uh, someone's coming. Yeah. Get out of the way. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, good times. And then... Um, what was that side road with those? Because on, on Honda Tech, those rolling shots that you took ended up going like what would people so, would call viral. So that was, um, that was, God, it was where we used to race. Kearney Super Villa? Kearney Villa. Kearney Villa Thank Road. That's where everyone used to kind of race All down that street. Yeah. But so you guys, everyone who knows their basic photography, uh, you know, rigs, suction cups, in the old school, you know car, how we did it? Car, car, Someone car. is just hanging out of a car, and people still do it, of course. But before people did it because there was literally no other way. I was, I was that asshole. I was back to the car. <laughs> so we're like taking up an entire two lane, three lane uh, on the wrong side of the road, and you're just hanging out. And the driver of the car is like, I'll tell you if someone's about to head, you know, r ram into us. And uh, there were some shots of me driving the EG. You guys, my hatch was blue. Uh, you know, carbon, uh, you know, accents, and then blue and black uh, Yokohama Advance. So rolling, it looked really cool with the blue and the black spinning, etc. And then that the backdrop of like that deadish grass, that like yellow, yeah. the blue and the, I mean, those shots, people on HT loved them when we posted them. It was really cool, man. It was a fun time. A long and, time ago. And uh, yeah, see, 2020, man, 15 years ago. That was my first love, my first car. Um, and then, like you said, apparently... I think it was about 05, 06, near the end of 05 that I bought uh, really? the Prelude. It was black. It was blown. I had to get a, a motor put in it because I didn't know how to do it back then. And uh, I just drove it around. It yeah. had Volks. I had Volks, seats. Uh... Yeah, I had um, Volks. I had seats. Um, and I had a urethane, quote unquote, spoon lip because I destroyed the carbon one that I had and, 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 uh, or something like that. That's, I think that's what I had on there. And that's when you saw me pull up to that JHP me. Yep. Yep. Dude, uh, I dipped that car for a long time. And it was somewhere around 06, 07 where I was just like, I can't just not. You know, even like, because dude, $600, $500 for black housing headlights. Plus you needed to wire them. And get. And back then no one made a jumper, so you had to like splice yeah. it. It was like, yo, that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. $600, I could damn near save up a little bit more and paint the car. Yep. I don't want to buy black housing JDM BB4 headlights when I need them. Like, because remember the car was faded, right? Um, but I mean, th this is like the the evolution sure. of how it turned into where I am. But more importantly, uh, for where you are, because you came at it um, not as a business, no. not as a photographer. We were all just kids who loved the, who got into these Im imports, yep. driving around, working to save up and and get mods. It was definitely paycheck to paycheck. Absolutely, for sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't approach it like a business. Um, I mean, maybe if I knew what I then what I know now, yeah, be different. I just was wanted to show my friends cars. You know, I thought they had cool cars. Opie and yeah, all those dude. Different guys. I was like, oh, yeah. dude, Opie's car was great, man. Yeah, and I was like, Ari's car was great. Yeah, everyone in that circle's car was cool. Yeah, I was like, these guys have cool cars, and let's show them off to these guys on like the forums and different stages. Yeah, and stuff. And they're like, dude, your friends have cool cars. And, yeah, you know, just one of those things. And well, the thing about the uh, you know the San Diego uh, uh, import car scene was strong. Yeah. For like sure. super strong, even in the racing, that's why. yeah, even in the stuff that we never super got into would would be like you know like you take like a crew like nine three five draggers, huge back then. Yep. They did the conversions and they had the crazy paint jobs and you know the show scene, whether people want to knock it or not, was thriving. Sure. Right. I mean, it, it, it's interesting. Fifteen twenty years later, it still is in its own ways, but uh, yeah, man, it was thriving. And then you know if you were going down the freeway and you just saw. A, a, a long line of hazards. Remember, that's where they were exiting. I, allegedly, I do remember. Okay, yes, you will neither allegedly. confirm nor yes, deny yes, if I you do. saw that in person. Something like that happened. Okay, yes. but uh, you know what, guys? Honestly, man, I mean, you know, like that was the scene. It had it had the the meets, the the, the shows, 
uh, the racing and just the 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 culture. The yeah. culture of it all was fun, man. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun, and and I mean, it's hard because you know the 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 contemporization of it all. It tends to to dilute the fun. Agreed. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but but I feel like that's going to be more applicable to you because you are one thousand percent integrated in a very real way, and that's it's hard to have yeah. that be fun when you're fielding hundreds or thousands of posts and comments and questions and. And how, how do you navigate that without losing your love? You know, it's definitely not um, as fun now, but still is fun, right? Like okay. It's, it's a job, but yeah, it's not sitting, um, you know, doing stuff that I used to do. I used to be in the federal student loan business, and that's a job, job. Like, yes. It was terrible, but it paid the bills, right? Yes. So uh, definitely a lot more fun now doing doing what I love, and, and uh, even with uh, the headaches that come with it. Yeah. frustration it's still um it's a lot of fun yeah, yeah i still have a good time with it okay so since we're in in this context of work yep. and how you transition from an enthusiast and a uh, self-taught recreational photographer to making a living shooting to then making a living writing to then making a living uh doing some mid-level management to now being upper level management right so over the course of the 15 years um you know the 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 corporations, the buyouts, and the transitions have been huge. Sure. Prime Media Source, and it just jump, jump, jump to right. now um, Discovery, right? Right. So what you you were employed in the in the print industry uh, over what four regime changes or three? I think four. 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 You and Willie have been the ones that, for all four, right? Yeah. 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 Four regime changes. Yeah. Four buyouts. It's four crazy. changes. Four filtrations. Um, and the subsequent thinning. At first, it was Lots small. Of thinning, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, in fifteen years, small, and over the time, man, right? Magazines used to have huge budgets. Photographers and writers could travel all over the world. Yeah. And now it's like you have to write almost everything yourself. Can't really outsource too much. You're definitely, um, you know, dealing with a much smaller budget. That's for sure. I mean, dude. At one point, I was even myself as a freelancer. I was writing. Between one and three features a month yep. for for a couple of publications, and I loved every moment of it, you know. And um, you guys, on a personal note, um, you know, in my live streams and other podcasts and different things, I'm always toting uh, and talking about grammar and enunciating and speaking proper English and having fun. You know, it, I know that gifts and memes and grammar is all kind of out the window and. Uh, acronyms and, and all this like internet language but if you uh, you know carry yourself in a certain way I'm actually a living example of how that can translate in a very positive way sure. because even back then as much as I might have looked a certain way and probably acted a certain way um, I still carried myself a certain right. way is that a fair statement for sure absolutely and 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 Matt is actually the first person to give me a chance at the way that I spoke, I think it was the way you worded it was, I might have approached you. I don't really remember. Maybe you remember. But I, re I remember something you told me at one point years ago. You said, well, if the way that you speak is the way that you can write, then there's a chance. Right. It was some something. In the, that realm, yeah. Yeah, something right. about that, how you said that particular kind of thing. And it turned into you were like, let's give it a shot. This is the, the sort of the, the method or the template. And I'll 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 break it down and tell you where you could do better. Yeah. And you actually ended up saying it wasn't bad. I needed to change this, yep. this, and this, and you used it. Yep. Do you remember what year that was? I don't remember what year it was. I do remember us talking about it at eighty five Bakery. Eighty five C. Yeah. Okay. In, uh, in Irvine, and uh, just kind of running through it. And like, yeah. Like, like this is good. Work on this. Yes. That type of thing. Yeah. I, I, okay. So there you go. So Matt is the reason. That I ended up transitioning and being able to have a, a, a an extra facet to my resume, to my career, uh, to my role as segueing from just a car enthusiast sure. to contributing right. to the culture in, as a writer. Um, it was Matt, and he's the one who got me the first um, article, and it turned into at one point, you know, one or two here and there, all the way to. Pretty recurring, you right. know, um, um, over the different changes. I think when Charles ended up having that one, what, two-year stint yeah. where he ran Import Tuner, yeah. 
uh, you know, shout out to Charles True, uh, Charles, Charles, Charles. He um he fed me a lot of work. You gave me work. Um, it was it was it was an amazing time to to be a part of it. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I always loved photography and I always appreciated it. And I just never really practiced that. I actually didn't really practice or or really apply myself photographically in the, until the last like maybe five years. But but I always like when I saw the the rolling shots you did of the hatch when we were on. Like was it Curdy Villa, right? Or yeah, Curdy. Um, and and all that kind of stuff. Even back then, I was like, dude, I need to, to to get into this art form. But it, it's been a, a crazy thing, you know. As we were talking about earlier, so we're going back fifteen, twenty years. We're both car young car guys, paycheck to paycheck, trying to buy any mod uh, that we thought was dope for the time, and then turned into these separate kind of careers, right? And you know. We both ended up selling our EGs. I know. Which is the which worst said, thing ever. Which I said I would never do. And course, like, no, totally. My no. EG wasn't the first car that was featured. That was my first car ever yeah. in life. And yeah. I said, there's no way I would sell it. Right. And I did. I right know. And we did. And it was, it's pretty bad, man. Times change. You know? But, you know, you live and you learn. If, if, if finances and spacing was different, we would never have to have sold them. Yeah. We could say, I'm ho- I held on to my first car ever. Uh, but you know, look, it is what it is. Okay. Um, but, but, but we're here now it's 2020 and I kind of wanted to, to, to touch on a couple of, of things, you know, with you about, we talked about magazines and, and the, the thinning, the, the evolution, right? Sure. So as if you're able to separate from the work side to being an enthusiast, right? right. If you're able to do that, what, what are your thoughts on the transition from, like we were talking about forums, right? Before forums, nobody could even really afford a point and shoot, right? A, a couple hundred dollar camera when we were like 16 is pretty major, right? Yeah. But we went to meets at like parks and just randomness, right? This is even before the NWP meet that spawned sure. the forum, yeah. right? Just like that that time you're talking about when, when I went to visit you, that wasn't an NWP meet. It was like five years before that. Sure. Like we'll, we don't even remember where we were going, but we were going somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Or like remember, was it Wilson Park and Torrance? Yeah, I was at that one. Right? Yeah. It could have yeah. been one of those. Yeah. Who knows, man? But, um, but um, what do you think? If, you, if you're able to separate uh, the business side to just being a car guy from what you have seen with the times where the only time people could socialize is if they went to socialize. You had to get in your car or get in someone homie's car and drive to a meet. Yeah, but I mean, you can still socialize now. It's just that it's done digitally, right? So it, it's not the same. Right? Yeah. Like we're, not, we're not face-to-face, but it's still interaction. Okay. Right? You're, you're still dealing with a like-minded individual yes. who's probably got the same goals you do in terms of building cars okay. or, or whatever. You mean to break necks? Okay. I'm sure, sorry. Sure. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> can we cut that? Okay. Um, so yeah, no. So I mean, you're still able to do that, but it's just done digitally now. Right? Yeah. So more so than, than ever before. And that's, so, just, that's just how it is. Like, so know, that tone, I, the tone yeah. that you're taking there yeah. is you're not really all that like bothered by it. I, Cause I get it. Right. I have kids, so I get it. Like that's just, that's what things are now. And, um, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. Like, I keep a pretty low profile overall, and I do a lot of communication via text and via yes. DM and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I get it. I, yeah. I totally understand it. You know, so it's a it's a method. It's existing. It's efficient. Yeah. So right. so be it. Right? right. And that that's the name of the game now. That's how I can do my job remotely. Yes. Sometimes I work from my phone all day. Like yes. Yes. On, yes. If I'm on the road somewhere or I'm under a car, yeah, I'm literally doing emails under the car. Like, sure. I'm sure. Handling stuff. On the move. Yes. And that's like, for me, that's great. Yes. For me, being able to work from home is like a huge blessing. Yes. Having two children, it, it's a huge blessing for me. Yes. So I, I love the fact that I can work from home. Without all this digital madness, that, yes. that wouldn't really be a possibility. You know, you know it's true. You know, um, I think that the part that scares me, I, I feel about it, is, is if there isn't some level of guidance, if there isn't some positive influence, what's going to end up happening is you have an entire... A generation, and I don't mean necessarily age literal, but I mean uh, a, a realm of human beings that are getting introduced to this supercomputer that can fit in our pocket and you can uh, interact with people across the globe in milliseconds, right. right? You can work, you can have an entire career from your phone, right? right. 
But they are some of the least informed people. True. They will... Okay, we were talking about this earlier. Someone will post on the Super Street page. Hey, what is this? What year is this? Where did you take this photo? Who shot the photo? What color is the car? All of those things are all answered in a caption. Right. Right? But they will take the time to touch the, the comment button, type out the comment when the answer is above them. And then when somebody, sometimes even you will answer and say, just click the link and all the answers to that and plus everything else you may want to know right. was written. Uh, just check it out. They'll be like, thanks, Dick. Yeah. Can someone else tell me the answer? Right. Right. W- what do you think about that? Um, I don't like it. But if you remember the forums, yes. instead of searching, people would be like, hey, can I put a you know, 4 by one fourteen on my EG or that's, whatever it might that's be? That's a good point. Same thing. It's true. Sure thing. It's the that, search button was at the top, right? And you right. could have done the search. It's true. And they're like, "Why am I going to search when these guys know the answer?" Give when these guys know so, the yeah. answer, fair enough, right. dude. Speaking of forums, I believe that forums are the the father of this of this existing quantification of credibility. Let me let me put that in layman's terms. Nowadays, if somebody has eleven followers, nobody takes them quote sure. unquote seriously. Sure. Who is this person? Nobody should care, right? But if someone has 111,000 followers, if they say something, if they're wearing something, if they're driving something, if they're doing something, I should pay attention. It is this credibility rating. And forums had to have been the father of that because if a moderator or if somebody with a thousand posts answered a question, can I put four by 114 on this? Does this fit that? Anything, right? If somebody with 11 post count answered, you're like, I don't know if that's true. Right. If someone with 1,000 did, for sure that that's true. But the guy who had 11 might have just been wrenching all day and could literally not be... Because back then, there's no phones. Right. You'd have to get onto your desktop, right? right? If right. you even could afford a desktop. So it's kind of this thing where people didn't really take the guys who didn't have a high post count seriously. And to me, that's the, the beginning of having a number indicate a person's credibility. Sure. What do you sure. think about that? So it's kind of always been that way, right? So influencers are influencers. You can look now for like YouTube, right? Okay. The guy that has 1.5 million followers, he puts up a video and in two hours he's got a million views. Yes. Of nonsense. Right. He might not know anything about cars. Right. But if he tells that guy to ask them the question, like this is how it is, they're going to buy into it, right? That's yes. Just, that's how it's always been though. That's not just... With social media, and that's how it was on the forums, as you mentioned. Yep, yep. Anyone that has a reputation. Yes. Even before, let, let's let's put it before the internet. Yes. If you have a reputation, th- that that's... Whether what you, what you say, legitimate or not. Right. There's guys right now that, that have huge followings, and what they say goes. And that could be style, perception. Yes. Um, you know, kind of giving direction on what you should be thinking or, or moving towards. Yes. There's a lot of different things, right? So, influencers have been around since the dawn of time. Yes. So that's not going to change at all. It's just a different format now. And it's also the rate that the information can it's reach people. It's fast. crazy yeah, fast, yeah, right? Yeah, right. That's kind of ties into the principle of how magazines have died. Yes. Because I agree. I agree. Because the, the concept of albeit physical and, and tangible and you can you can say it has a weight to it figuratively and literally, the principle of waiting thirty days for that to come in the mail or more, right? or more is absolutely archaic because you have the internet and not just the internet, but now the internet on your phone. Right. So you're going to get a dissemination of information instantaneously, true or not. And no one wants to wait, right? Event coverage is a good example of that, right? Yes. So you go to an event, you can cover it on your Instagram. Yes. If you're waiting for print, it's going to be... Possibly two months. Possibly so, two yeah. months. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. And so it, it, you know, the I think um, whether they intended to or not, bloggers helped kill magazines. I mean, they may not have been maliciously doing so, sure. but embracing this, I can click a, a template, a WordPress, uh, blah blah blah, and you know, put up high resolution photos instead right. of having to host it on Photo Bucket. Right. You know, Flickers and Tumblers. I mean, I think they're still around, but no one really needs it the way they used to. No. And it's just this thing where, you know. I feel very blessed that we grew up, you know, our age group 
Uh, well, you're like 78, but... 79, whatever. Okay. But our, our, our age group, we grew up before the internet even existed. Right. I mean, we literally were kids when no one had even presented this theory right. of this thing called the World Wide Web. Right. And then, remember the, remember the acronym uh, ISH, the Information Superhighway? They started putting out these like acronyms, ish, www, and we're like... And then people were like, wait, so you're going to be able to connect the world with the phone lines? That's pretty stupid. Right. Remember that? Yeah. And it turned into, next thing you know, 56K. Oh, wow, they're really using the phone lines. Right. Dialing up. If someone called, it cuts you off because it was literally the phone the line. line yeah. yeah. And then it just turned into faster and faster and, and different and faster. And I think that that's crazy, man. Um, so it's a little bit scary, right? Like how fast is it going to get and how much more are we going to see? Right now we're getting into issues of like privacy and stuff and um, definitely a little bit worrisome for sure. Um, okay, so I like how calmly you stated that. Yeah. I, I actually think that, that the people who might come across as, as being all freaked out, nah man, it's, if you really allow yourself to understand what, okay, so there, there's two ways to measure information. It's the amount sure. and the speed, right? They're not the same. Right. Right, and I think people kind of just don't really re realize that you could have a bazillion things to send, but sending them and having the speed to send them is one thing. If you want to upload a 4K video that's an hour long, if you don't have speed, ah, uh, you'll upload it, but it'll take you a week. Sure. Right? If you have speed, you can upload this mega movie in 12 minutes. Right. Okay. Well, the thing that's scary is is that if you take something like facial mapping which nobody cares anymore, face swapping, Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, but they it's not 12 points. It's like a 1,000 points, sure. right? And if they take that and the speed at sending, okay, if you have 150 people in the frame at a moment, it scans every face, and in this, in, within milliseconds, it sends it to a database, pulls, it recreates, draws up their face, so someone sitting at a desk is looking at them, and then matches it, all within milliseconds to a computer saying, this is this person, this is their right. credit rating, this is where they live, this is how many children they have, they're on their back taxes. That, I don't know why people don't think that that should be a concern, right? And right. that's what concerns me, right. things like that. Right, first of all, I don't appreciate you using math. I heard math in there, I don't okay. like that at all. Don't all right. do that again. All right. but, um, <laughs> no, but, the, um, but no, you're, you're right, and I think the, the fact that it raises so much awareness and people are like putting up a fight yeah. is good. Yes. But I don't think you're stopping it. No, it's futile. It's, it's, it's happening no matter it is. what. It is. But putting up a fight similar to exhaust laws and, and SEMA yes. and, and all that stuff, putting up a fight sometimes will get you a little bit of a workaround yes. and get you a chance to sort of hold off on some of the most important stuff, which maybe is good. Um, you know, I worry about credit and stuff like that because I have kids and I'm worried about their future, right? Yes. But... In terms of someone tracking like my, my buying habits and stuff, like I, I don't do anything, you know, out of the ordinary. So I don't really care. Okay. I'm more concerned with my credit, my money. Yeah. Um, and my, you know, the stuff that. But I mean, dude, kids. then you also got to talk about. Speaking of kids, you have these videos that are showing people who are, who are, you know, everyone's starting to get apps so they can turn up the thermostat. Yeah. The ring doorbell cameras to watch their dogs, their kids, sure. safety. You got anything connected to the internet can be hacked. Right. And so you have people who are hacking into baby cameras. It scares the hell out of me. That scares me. Okay, and we, you, we you see those videos those. Yeah. where yeah. some dude's like talking creepy to a child? Yeah. Like that is deeply unsettling. Yeah, that scares the hell out of me. Okay. I'll, I'll be honest, that, that part of it, like having home security. Yes, and then, and that smart because... home security, meaning just on the, on the internet. Right. So it, someone can me. unlock your doors, turn up your heat, right. and kind of there's, craziness. There's, there's certain things I wouldn't do, like the door locking is one yes. of them. The garage one, a few of my neighbors have the, the automatic garage yes. thing with your their phone. I won't do that. Yep, yep. Um, Keep it manual, man. Yeah, I have cameras everywhere, and um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm trying to stay as secure as possible. Yes. When it comes to stuff like the doors, I, I don't mess with it. For sure, uh, but for sure. Definitely the hacking of the cameras scares me a little bit. Um, you know, kind of an eye on my kids. I'm definitely uh, a helicopter parent, um, so I, I stay like right over the top of my kids, so. Um, maybe to an extreme amount. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, look. Okay, so speaking of that, man. Um, you know, we were, ki we were kids, teenagers driving around, having the time of our lives. Right. And we would never have thought, I'm going to be married. I'm going to... more. We weren't thinking about marriage, mortgages. Not me. And children, <laughs> right? No, not so, me. Okay, so here you are, man. 
wife um, and and mother. Uh, you have a, a, a wife, and she's a mother of two. Yeah, she's a mother. She's the mother. Yeah. I mean, you mother sometimes. I am. Uh, but your cars, you mother your cars. I've been called a mother, yeah. But I mean, dude, you know, it, it's just it's just a trip to see how we are, man. We're yeah. getting older. Yeah, when it's sure. cold, our joints hurt. Yes. And things Today, ache. Yeah, that's right? why I keep moving because my knee is yeah. locking up on me, but it's all right. Um, so, so speaking of that, man, you know, it, it's uh, a career... It's a marriage. It's parenting of two sons, yes. right? And how do you now find the time to work that job, be a good husband, be a good father, and have now segued back into personal toys, which we are going to get to. Right. But how do you do it? How do you for navigate me, that? For me, I think it's just a matter of time management. It's always been... Um, a strong suit for me. Yes, it been, has. I've I remember always, you. Yeah, I've yeah. always been good with time management. I think I get that from my mom. Okay. Um, I think it's just a matter of prioritizing. Obviously, the family for me is first. Yes. And even when I came back to, to work for this company, um, Willie is the one that brought me back in. Yes. You know, I mentioned to him at the beginning. I was like, look, I, I'll give 110%, but my family is like number one. Yes. Just so we're clear, there has to be a, a, a life-work balance. And he was... Like he gets it because he has two, he two has, kids. Yep, yep. So he totally got it. Um, so there are times that I've got to pull away from work because, you know, this has to happen or that has to happen. Um, drop the kids off at school, yes. you know, whatever it might be. So that's always number one for me. Work is like right up there though. Yes. Um, whether it's this company or wherever I'm working, I always try to give as much as I can possibly give uh, within reason. Yes. Um, the toys, like the, the building definitely takes a backseat to all that. Of course. But it's always in my head. And I don't know if that is normal. All right. It's a little bit obsessive. So whether it be I'm driving home or if I'm giving the kids a bath or whatever I'm doing, I'm almost always thinking about the next, what I'm going to be working on. Even you mean the, on your personal cars? Yes. Okay. Even if it's the smallest, dumbest No, no, thing that's not, for, I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. It is obsessive. Yes. Uh, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's just, I don't know what it is. Um, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, that's the very first thing after... I get my son on the bus. You, I gotta get him on the bus by yes. six thirty. So I'm up like five thirty ish. Yes. Um, so I'm like giving him breakfast, you know, making him lunch, whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, so I'm gonna have an hour on on Sunday. Yes. If if I have this hour, I can kind of chop it up, and I can get twenty minutes over here. I can cut these pieces out over here, whatever it is. Right? Yes. And so um, that's always been in me, but I think over the last two years, it's been way more. Um, and I think part of it is my wife. So my wife's very, very cool. You've known her for a long time. Yeah, I have. Yeah. She understands my like car thing and is, is also my work thing, but she always is more than willing to give me time yes. to do car stuff. So that's like my, my, uh, um, that's a very invaluable ex yeah, uh, you sure. know, factor in your life for sure. is that your wife, she doesn't tolerate cars. She likes them. She likes, yeah, that right. the, the, the keeps me happy. So correct. Correct. So for her, she, she enjoys spending time with like her girlfriends, like, you know, her friends from like high school, they hang out, you know, they go to dinner or whatever and I'll take care of the kids. Yeah. The, the trade off being, I just want garage time. So okay. So garage time. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Sure. Right. So we, we mentioned that's, earlier. That's where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah. man. We, we, My crowded garage. We, um, we talked about our first loves, yep. our hatches, right. and still are our first loves, right? Sure. But there was a time where a personal build just kind of ended up not really being anywhere near a priority. Yeah. But now, sure. now we're talking, let's just talk about what you currently have. Yep. Name off. The cars that you currently have. So I, I think the one that you can kind of say is like not really mine. It's sort of a halfway point right now is the, the blue SI. Right? Yes. So it's a 2018 Civic SI sedan that I got from Honda on a one-year program. Yes. That I pitched them. And it was basically to modify the car, write about it. I think I did seven or eight stories on it. Um, something like that. Yes. Brought it to SEMA. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys, the, that Civic was in the Honda corporate booth yep. at SEMA 2019, the one that just passed. If you guys were there, the images, the, uh, uh, you would have seen it, the blue Civic Si on the SSR wheels. Yeah, and that one, that one sort of took over my life for a few weeks because, you know, we're getting closer to SEMA. I didn't have a ton done to it, and I can't go too far because it's not my car, right? Yes. So the last, like, three weeks or so, Two or three weeks, I was really, really working hard on that car to get it finished. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I put a different turbo kit in there. Like, I did all this different stuff, but, like, the last home stretch. Yes. And it definitely warned me. Like, I was, like, done. I yes. Was, 
mentally and physically exhausted. And I remember afterward, I, I think I mentioned it um, afterward, I didn't want to touch a car for like a week. I didn't, yeah. I didn't you mean about, after SEMA? Yep. I didn't think about cars. I just took a week uh, to just sort of like... Detox. Myself, yeah. I was so worn out. So but you do so doing that, and that is not elaborate by any no, stretch of the no, imagination. No, I did it in the driveway. So, so you can understand how I relate to what you're talking right. about on a very real level. Sure. Because building a car outright from the bottom to the top is the most physically brutal thing right. that I have and ever and done. Putting, putting like a time cap on it, like yes, for SEMA is just dumb. It, it's dumb. I'm, it's just a really stupid thing to do. But I, it's it's a necessary evil, right? Yes, it's one of those things. But for that car. Um, I didn't want to put it in SEMA with like the the number of mods that I had because I felt like I needed more. Sure. And so I was definitely reaching out to a lot of people, and um, you know, I, I I got it done. But I think doing leading up to that point, doing SEMA, and then of course doing my work side of SEMA, like my actual work side. Yes. I was just like for sure. Why? I saw you, man. We yeah. talked, and uh, it would be like, "Hi, Matt." You're like, "Hey, Big Mike," and I just saw bags yep. under your eyes. Yeah, I was and you tired. Were just working, and then even like you know, my life just like. You need to like slow down a little bit because you're just you're doing too much. Basically. Yeah. So so that okay. So that's just the first one. 2018 yeah. Civic Si. Yeah, you so had it on one, SSR wheels. What turbo? So originally I had a 271 uh, turbo upgrade, which is awesome. It's a W1 straight drop in turbo. Yes. Great. Um, but visually it looks stock under yes. the hood. I needed some more. Yeah. Um, I was told by a certain a group of people that hey, you need to do some more to this. So. Um, I was talking to... Um, That's an evil of doing a corporate kind of relationship yeah, build. Yeah, it's like, yeah. don't do, do much, but do more. So it, yeah. was, it was a really weird thing. But um, PRL had had just done their uh, their big turbo upgrade kit. And yeah. so um, I ended up doing the PRL kit. Mm -hmm. And so I have that in there. What did it make? Uh, I haven't tuned it yet. So, okay. Um, what did theirs make? The, the, PRL, the PRL one. Uh, theirs is like a crazy race car. They, they made over 400, but theirs is like a race car. Race yeah. Car, so. Um, so all I need for right now is this guy right here. The spec clutch. Oh, the so, clutch. Yeah, so I okay. just got that clutch in the mail, so um, I got to get that installed, and then we'll tune it and see what it does. Okay, so turbo kit from PRL. E85. E85, yeah. the SSR wheels. Uh, which they're, Okay, the, br the Brid Seats. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, that's just one. Yeah, so that the reason I say that car is not mine, because it, it is Honda's yes. car. Um, we're, we're in talks. I may actually purchase the car, uh, depending on what type of a deal can be offered. Sure. Um, I, I sort of... Um, really really like it after this this time with it yes and so initially i wasn't a huge fan but i, I really yeah i was about to say right yeah. from really, our era to now why a 2018 civic si i think for me being like dad mode it's great having a car that has a heater ac power steering and they're bigger all these new ones are big body cars it's bigger it's way safer mm -hmm. um yeah safer yeah. yeah so i think that was that's okay a big factor so i may i may in fact end up purchasing it if not i gotta take everything off and make it back to stock and that's going to be a whole ordeal, but... Okay, so 2018 Civic Si. What about the family? The family car? So, um, my wife has a Pilot. That's what we use yep. usually. But I also have a um, 2012 TLSH. Yes. So, the TL is like just my old man, just my cruiser. I bought that car because it was comfortable. Yeah. And I, I was doing a lot of traveling back and forth to LA, but also because there aren't a lot of mods for it. So, it definitely keeps me from tinkering. So it just has coilovers, but, yeah. wheels, tires, done. That's yeah, it. but I mean, big body, luxury sedan, yeah, right? Uh, smooth, super smooth, safe, a uh, lot of space in the back, right? You put what wheels do you have on it? Those are uh, wind sport. Weds, right? Yeah, weds. And then it just has um, team coilovers. Yeah. And then I just did like the uh, the OEM optional uh, arrow kit. Yeah, the lip kit. And then, no, it looks great, man. And then color matched the grill. That was and, like, and I remember the pilot when you the first time you rolled up on Volks. I was like, damn it. Dude. Oh, the element? The element. The, yeah. the element, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's not even here anymore. But yeah. uh, So you got the 18 Civic Si Turbo. Mm -hmm. You have the, the TL. The Cruiser, yeah. Right, the Cruiser. The and then what are the two babies? The two, like, fun projects? Three, three. So, wait, wait, what? So, so I still have my, my old 2001 AP1, right? Yeah, so, um, where is that? So that car is at a friend shop right now. Um, it was the yellow one. Yeah, you was, still have that? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll never get rid of that car. Okay, that's the one that I. I know I said I'll never get rid of my Civic. And I sure. Got rid of it. This one for sure. I'm okay. Keeping, that will be going to my five year old when he's old understood. Enough. That'll be his car. But um, so that one, um, I, I definitely had deal dealt with a, quite a few shops. Um, some of them were doing R and D with it. Okay. Some of them were doing some work for me on it. Yeah. Um. Got to a point where um, I got it up and running. Yeah. Um, not not long ago, actually. I got it up and running. 
and um, we had a complete failure. Um, there was a foreign object in the number four, and um, we opened it up. And, what was the foreign object? Um, it's not from that engine, one hundred percent. So something was was placed in there, and I can't pinpoint it because uh, I did go to a couple different shops. Um, Hold on now. So, yeah. Hold on. Uh, this is an interesting yeah. update to that car. Yeah. So something was placed in in there through one of the runners, the ITB runners, which I keep which I keep plugged at all times while the car was down. So plugged with what? Um, I have like a you know, like a tennis ball thing. You pop the tennis in. balls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't just mean like my butterflies are closed, which is where they're going to be normally. You mean physically obstructed. So someone had to remove. A tennis ball. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, okay, allegedly. Yeah. Using deductive reasoning, someone would have to move the tennis ball, right. physically turn and open the butterfly. Which is not easy because I didn't have a throttle cable on it. So in order to get there, you got to dig your hand in there. And turn it. And these are AT power, so they are tough to open. So. And an object would have to go in there. Right. Interesting. So, so we got to fire it up, and um, we heard something pinging, bouncing around, killed it immediately. Yes. Um, you know, looked down... Inside and saw... Uh, Through the spark plug or what? Yeah, pull the plug and then I was like, oh, that does not look good. No. So, yeah. So... All right. One of those things, but um, the head was salvageable, which is All good right. because it's one of the last ones that um, Saul did at MCP, um, Emission Critical. So, um, the head was actually repaired. So, the combustion chamber, the valves didn't get destroyed by whatever was in there? No, but the head had some, some things in it. Sure. Had some, uh, some material added, cleaned it up. Uh, got new pistons thanks to JE. They sent out some new pistons for it, and um, it, it runs now. Okay, so w- the the piston that was in that chamber destroyed the top. Destroyed. 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 What about the walls? Walls are fine. There was ah. a couple of marks, but no actual hatch. So you can't you can't actually feel it with your nail. You can just see it. Okay. Um, and that block is sleeve. So okay. So that's good. So so you didn't have to clean up, hone it. Nope. Okay, nope. so you wouldn't even catch your fingernail. No. Nope. Nope. All right. The car so piston currently, currently idle. It starts. It's okay. all good. Uh, I've got a lot of work to do on it, though, and I don't have space right now, so it's going to have to be put on the back burner. Okay, so, so like, let's talk about the mods that you have on there. Okay, so that one is AP1 F20, but it's uh, um, sleeved and it is stroked. Yep. Uh, so it's now 2.4 liter, and then it runs um, uh, Urge Design ITB, which are AT power. And then um, the head is mission critical performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And then what, uh, what wheels do you have on it right now? I still have SSR Type F. The oh, type, no. okay. Yeah, type F, yeah. Okay. Oh, the black one. Yes. All right. Yes. So yellow and black. And then the the base is pretty pretty interesting. It's nothing crazy. It's not like a crazy show car or anything. It's just you know just just my fun car. Or whatever. Yeah. But the um, radiator is actually V mount so that the um, inlet for the ITBs can go over the top of yes. where the radiator we usually go. And so um, to get cool air. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Correct. So that's one thing with. With that car putting ITBs on a S two thousand, it's very tough to get air to them mm-hmm. because it sits so far back. Yeah. So we actually have a plenum on there, and then there's that filter in the front and the whole thing. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I remember the V mount. Yep. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah, me too. I, and me I too. didn't uh, yeah. didn't know about that foreign object. Yeah, I was kind of like, you know what? I'm tired of this thing. Let's get it going. Yeah. And then, um, you know, unfortunately, I had that that issue, but I'm not even like, I didn't even think twice. I was like, it is what it is. You know, I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not going to give up on this car. For a moment, I thought, hey, just put a stock motor in there and just cruise it. Yeah. But, um... No, a 2.4 liter stroker with that mission critical head, it's yeah. going to be a monster, yeah. dude. plus the, uh, the head was salvageable. Yeah. So I was like, dude, let, let's finish this thing, so... All right, so, 2018 Civic Si, TL Cruiser, the wife's got the pilot, you had the element before. Yeah, I got rid of Now we touched on the S2000, the last two. Okay, so the ones that are in the garage right yes. now, you're sitting next to, this is uh, DB2, it's an old GSR, Aztec Green Pearl. Um, I bought this car from a buddy in San Diego who he bought it to start as a project. It's, it was stock, but he like ran out of money immediately. So he's like, you should buy it for me. Just take it. Give you a good deal on it, which he did, but it was rough. Okay. Like, I mean, rough. Yeah. So I um, need somebody to call me and be like, hey, I've got a DA. You should buy it yeah, from me. Right. I'd be like, you're right. But I should. It was, I mean, it was in rough, rough shape. Um, so obviously um, it's been repainted. Just a stock color. I just wanted... Uh, Dude, because I, this color is the best. Yeah, I, I don't think I would have done this car unless it was originally red or asset green. That's the only way I would have done... Red I, or green. Yeah, I didn't want a white one for sure. Um, and well, I mean, black, yeah. black would have been cool. Um, 
Like, as a base? Like, if you ever needed to repaint a car, a black one's better I to think, have. Uh, for this generation, the GSRs were just uh, red, white, and, and green. For all DAs? Yeah, for the DB2s. Yeah, for a DB2. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah, it was only red and black. I'm mean, sorry, red or, or green I would have done. I wouldn't have done a white one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is, like, a very 90s color, and I, I like that. Oh, yeah, so, dude. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a beautiful car, man. Yeah, I love it. Um, with, with the repaint, of course, yeah. and the little bit of external accessories. Yep, so it's... um. It starts now, it fires up. Um, there's still, you know, some finishing things I gotta do, like the cooling system I showed you earlier. Yep. Still working on that. And then... Um, hey, for, for those of you guys listening right now who are wondering, I wanna see these things. All of these things are coming out in a BTS vlog that I'm gonna do with Matt. It'll be out pretty soon, you guys. Um, these different projects that we've touched on, the garage, his workspace as an enthusiast, the time management. You guys will be able to see how he's able to work on these projects. All of that will be shown to you guys in the behind-the-scenes vlog coming yeah. out pretty soon. Yeah, for sure. You'll be able to see the DA that we're talking about right now and then the gab wheels that are on it. Yeah, I've got these old gabs that were just like the car. They were beat to hell. And um, I probably should have even bought them because they were so rough. Okay. But then um, a buddy of mine in San Diego is like, yeah, I could fix them. Yeah. So he repainted them, like refinished them, got them all straight. And now they, they balance perfectly. It's all yeah. good. I was a little bit worried they weren't going to balance, but they did. Um, and I, I just like those wheels, you know. Dude, it's, it's generation cool. specific. It's yeah. era correct, period yeah. correct. And yeah. It has the original B17 that came with the car. Yes. Um, I didn't want to change that out. So I ended up just um, pulling the motor um, and then just having it built just rods and pistons. Real simple. Okay. So when you got it, other than it being rough and I'm like, oh, I should repaint it. Did you know that you were going to go all out in the engine mix? Yeah, so right before I got it, um, when I was still talking to the guy about purchasing it, I um, had just done a story with Whitfield yeah. uh, in Upland. Yeah. And then um, I mentioned to him you know, about the car, and I was like, hey, I think I want to turn it into like a, a project. Yeah. And I didn't even really ask him. He's like, dude, he's like, if you want to do a turbo kit, like we can just do it here. And I was like, of course, because like, yeah. that guy's like a legend, right? So it was it was definitely an honor it was cool just to like be working with him on the project okay and he just basically i just told him all my ideas like i wanted a backdoor setup top mount turbo uh, i don't see a lot on da's um so we started talking about all the different ins and outs and he's like i can make that happen and dude he did like every time i would go back he'd be like hey i'm gonna work on these three things this week cool and yeah I'd go there on friday and then those three things were done i was like so from a yeah. fabrication customer perspective it was a, a solid experience for sure the most professional level of fabricator yeah, because I've, I've dealt with a lot of fabricators sure right and typically they're a little bit all over the place and yes i get it because everyone's demanding stuff from them but he always stuck to like a really strict schedule which is like yeah awesome so so da repainted the original green uh you got some uh flex light windows yeah right yeah. um and uh you got the, the seat hats. The carbon hatch, yeah. the, the, I mean, honestly, the Recaros we were talking about earlier, it would almost look like they're way too new yeah. style, but it looks great in there. Like you guys, I'm going to show you all of this stuff on the vlog. I mean, it's a really beautiful car. And then you look under the hood and because things are predominantly done in dark colors or wrinkled black, it looks very understated. But like he just mentioned, top mount turbo, you know, backdoor setup, etc. Yeah, I mean, just a fantastic um, build. Yeah, thank you. I think the whole, the whole idea for this car was like to modernize modernized yeah. the car right? but you kept the original b17 which is super cool yeah because like this this chassis was the car that got me into car and in, into cars oh, in general okay. in the first place so oh. so my friend in san diego his brother got one as a graduation present in like 91 okay he got a, a gs yes like a red gs and then he lowered it you know did exhaust the whole thing and then um that definitely hooked us and then we got into cars like so that. if a gsr if a, if a if a da or a db you know two got you into cars how did your first car be that was that e, that eg no my first car was actually um it was a 91 civic hatch oh 91 yeah and then the okay. first car i started like really really working on was um a 90 crx si okay see i only i can only think of you as the as that's before hatch. i knew it. yeah it was a long time you probably weren't even born yet but it was yeah that's right we, yeah. if you guys remember he's 79 yeah, that's right so um that crx um that one was like, I, I did a lot to it, right? So that was the first car that I ever did a swap in. And I think in San Diego at that time, that was the, the first one that bolted in. If you, remember, if you remember back then, everyone was cutting off. And welding. The, yeah, cutting the yeah. welding. This guy that I was working with, um, he was a friend of mine. He figured out a way to, to mount it without having to cut. Okay. And he's using spacers and it was, you know. Hokey. Back then it was great. But sure. now you, you just laugh at it, right? Yeah. But um, I was like, dude, if we can bolt this in, I prefer to do that. That way it's reversible. And we ended up just bolting it in, and it worked out. So 
I had the, that piece Sick. of steel, yeah, for a long time. And then um, that motor actually ended up um, getting right in, and I put a stroker in there. Yeah. And so I had a stroker in there, and then I had the car painted. Um, you see, know, I never even got to see yeah, that car. That's well, before, like, you know. Yeah, that before I yeah. met you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I see. I have a few photos around all. Um, so, okay. So, so when you had the opportunity uh-huh. to get this Generation Integra, yeah. because it was the first one, all the nostalgia, you got it, and you got to this point with it now where it's close. Yeah, so I've had it, it for a long close. time, and a lot of people ask me about it. The reason it's taken so long is because um, I bought this car and started on it as a project in Honda Tuning. Yes. Right? So Whitfield did all of his magic under the hood. It was awesome. Um, but then the magazine got, got let go, right? They yes. shut down that book. So I didn't have um, anywhere to put it. Yes. Um, and at that time when, when um, the magazine got shut down, I got laid off. Yes. At that time, I was in the midst of buying this house. Okay. Like this house wasn't built yet. And we were I remember yeah, that. So we're right in the middle, right? When so, they were like leveling the ground here to correct, build this correct. complex. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So I was like, shit, what am I gonna do? So Because you guys bought this site unseen. Uh, well we you see like the, the, the models. Yeah, yeah, the model, yeah. but the house that was not even in existence. Right. Yet. It was like, you know, me and my wife, my wife's first house together and so it was a big deal. And um, you know, if if we weren't able to if I wasn't able to get employed again, they were gonna pull alone of course and you lose you're down which was a lot a of lot money, of money a lot of money a lot of hard work so when i got laid off and i don't know how far you want to get on this but when i got laid off i immediately started looking for a job yes and i was out of work for about four days yes and then i found another job got picked up on the spot basically I went for an interview and then that day i went home and they called me and like we want you to start on monday yes so it was a blessing thank, thank oh, you i remember that job yeah wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah, but, but you had to save that down. Correct. So as soon as we reported back to Wells, like, hey, just so you know, you got a job. It's over here. They're like, all right, you're good. No problem. I was, yeah. I didn't sleep for like a week. Dude. For like, sure. I was stressed out. But, for sure. But that ended up happening. And so we moved in here and I, I didn't touch cars for like probably like two years. Right, 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 I, I just, right. I didn't have, it's not that I didn't have the, the, the passion for it, but you know, I had my second son. Yes. New home. Yes. I had to pay for the hardscape, the landscape, all this stuff, plus the baby. I was like, you know, I, I, I can't put, I got to prioritize. For I can't sure. can't put energy toward that right now. Yes. I need to make sure that this is all taken care of. Sure, before. sure. So I just didn't touch anything. So this thing just stayed under a cover. I didn't touch it. Yes. And so when people go, dude, you've had that car for like five years. Right. But really I haven't because I didn't touch it for a long time. For long sure, man. Yeah, so. Look, a lot of the people, let's be honest. A lot of the people are like, oh, what's up with your cars? Right. There's the, those are people who don't have spouses. Right. They don't have children. But I get it because if this was when I was you know, 25, yeah. the thing would have been done in eight months. You know sure, I mean? so sure. I totally get it. Hey, look, so you touched on something and I want, let, let's go, go back to that yeah. real quick. Yeah. Honda tuning, yeah. right? You had become the head editor Correct. of Honda tuning magazine. In a time where they had they had um, canned modified, right. right, right, and it was I mean sport compact car and turbo were the first two to go some years prior. Right. Then there was the project car yes. and modified uh, destruction or or you know elimination, and Honda Tuning was still there. Right. And when you took over, not only did it survive. You had gotten it to a point of actual growth. Yeah, it done pretty well. Um, prior to me, um, Aaron Bonk was the yes. editor. Um, Aaron, um, I didn't know Aaron. I knew of him, but I sure. didn't know him before he became the editor. So when he did, um, he had me doing a lot of freelance. We became friends and you okay. know, we worked together on quite a, quite a bit. Um, and then when he decided he wanted to move on, you know, it was up in the air. And he's like, listen, I'm, I'm moving on. He was like, I think you should take, take it over. Um, for me... I, I didn't jump right at the opportunity like most people would think. Like, dude, you can you can just be the editor of this of this book you already work for. Yes. But I didn't jump right at it because I had a regular job okay. and then I was just doing freelance on the side. Yes. And it was like money wise, it would have been actually losing a little bit of money. Understood. But long term, I had to think like, what am I going to do in the future? I'm not going to be a freelancer forever. Yes. You know? So um, I got interviewed like officially, and then they're like, you know, the job is here if you want it. So I ended up just taking it, and that's yes. when I lived in San Diego. Yes. And so I was driving from San Diego to Anaheim. I remember that. Like four days a week, which brutal, is Brutal, like, dude. Brutal, man. Yeah. Four days a week is a lot, right? And so um, that's why we ended up moving up here eventually. Yeah. Because my wife was working from home, and her job didn't matter where she was. Yeah. And so she's like, why don't we just move to Orange County and just try it for a while? Yeah. And so really it was her that kind of sparked it. And I was like, if 
I, I didn't want to ask, right? Like, we weren't married at this time. We were yeah. Just, we were just together. And I was like, you know, I didn't want to ask, but if, if you're willing to, to try that, let's give it a shot. We yeah. didn't have any kids. We, you know, it was yeah. good timing. So, uh, and we've been here ever since. So. so, there are still a lot of people. Like, dude, up until last week, I was doing a live stream on my Instagram mm -hmm. when we, the, the magazine kind of came, magazines in yep. general came up because yep. of Super Street, which we'll get to in a moment. Right. But that kind of came up in a conversation and somebody was just like, man, whatever happened? Oh, you know, when did Honda Tuning magazine stop making? Because I brought, <laughs> they're like, when did Honda Tuning stop making magazines? And I was like, bro, what? Good morning. I was <laughs> just like, you just asked that in t 2019, right? right. Uh, the end of 2019. And what year was it that it officially got canned? 14. 2014. Right. And I was like, how do you not know? Right. Because I had mentioned that and they were like, Honda Tuning Magazine doesn't make magazines anymore. And I was like, no, man. Yeah, but if you're not really immersed in like... This is coming from a person who was just like, I loved Honda Tuning and I wish it was still sure, here. And I'm sure. like, but you clearly didn't even subscribe to it. Right, right? Right, right. But here's the thing, right? I remember, Matt, you know, we, we, we were already very well acquainted at this point in a recurring fashion. And, and you're the you're the editor. Um, you're making money for the magazine, mm -hmm. right? Your job, right. you're doing your job in an era where, where magazines, uh, uh, shelf sales and subscriptions were all, you know, going down. It, was, it wasn't a good time, right? Right. It wasn't a good right. time. It was the, the beginning of the end. Right. And, um, you were able to have Honda Tuning thriving. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't me. It was it was the advertisers, the ones that wanted to be a part of it. They saw that there was uh, growth benefit from being associated with that book, that title. And the way that you know that they were right, those vendors were correct. When that magazine was shuttered, and I went to work for this other company, and I was uh, in. Uh, I'll just say I worked for an agency. Sure. I was still in the car world, but not on the enthusiast side. Yes. It was more the corporate side. Yes. Right? And so uh, I remember I had lunch with um, a group that used to be a big time vendor in that book. Yes. And they're all like, man, what happened? Like, what happened? And I was just trying to explain to them what, you know, what went on. And they go, yours was the only, they advertised in seven different titles. Yes. They go year over year, yours is the only one that paid back. Because that group of enthusiasts, they were purchasing the parts that they were advertising. That could be chance, that could be a million different things, right? Sure. But that's just one example, right? Now, when it comes to the digital front, where I'm fully in that world, right? Yes. When we put something up Honda related, almost every single time it does way better than anything else. And you're comparing that to Supras and Skylines and you know R32s, 34s, whatever. Honda. You're talking about traffic numbers, impressions, and traffic, traffic tra everything. Honda content gets the most. Always, always. So when it came to magazine sales, typically. The Honda issue did, did you know, yeah. Well, of uh, Super Street, the Honda, the yeah. annual Honda issue is the best selling issue. Yeah. It was right? for quite a while, yeah. So yeah, that was a that was a, a, a I knew that the Honda because you know Nissan issue, uh, Honda issue, all these different issues, and I you know as a as a as a predominantly Honda enthusiast over the years, I always like to see that, right. but I never but knew it, that but, that was the best one. But just just to like to to cap this, so it, it's definitely a, a chain of events, right? It's not because I did anything. Was like, oh, people are gonna buy the book now because he's there. It's not that, and I don't, I don't look at it that way. There's always gonna be guys building Hondas, right? Always, yes. Right. We never really go away. If you go away, you're probably gonna come back again, right? So everybody wants to see those, and as much hate and disdain as, as Hondas get on the internet, they're wildly popular. Even the downtime, they're wildly popular. If you talk to somebody like Brian at Hossport, he's like, I can't keep these B series swaps on the shelves. Who's doing B-series swaps? A lot of people. Apparently right? a lot. Because it's like his top seller. It's crazy. So That's they, present day, you guys. By the right, way, he's right. talking about Brian Gillespie from Hasport, Hasport Mounts. He's talking about in present day. Right now, people it's are doing It's still 19, 2019, 2020, the number one mount seller. They're killing it. So it's it's definitely like this this chain of events. So I'm all I was doing is just presenting it out there, right? The, the fans, the people that were reading the book were the ones that were building cars. Yes. Buying product, yes. If they're buying product and these vendors have their ads and they're like, "Oh, they're they're buying this group of enthusiasts is buying our product," yes, from this source, yes. Let's buy more. So they kept coming in. So it wasn't because of something I did. It's just it's just a matter of of cover. I think covering vehicles that people were interested in. Um, 
you know, being an editor, you get a lot of flack, right? So if you cover this CRX over here, this guy on the other side of the country is pissed off because sure. you didn't feature his car. Sure. And he's going to be very vocal about it. Sure. If you cover two show cars and you didn't do a race car... The race car community hates your guts. They hate your guts, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was doing the race issue just to sort of address that. Yeah. And I thought that was like a good way to give them their shine. Because um, I like race cars too. Right? Yeah. But, you know, even that, it's you can't survive long term on that type of a format when the world's changing so quickly, right? So now recently we saw Super Street's no longer in print. Yes. It's transitioned to strictly digital. So... Some people will say, well, I saw that coming, you know, a mile away. Okay, you can say that, but it's not for lack of effort, and it's not because... Right. Because everyone just suddenly put down magazines. We're all kind of like in this world where everything's digital now. That's just how it is. That's, yes. That's how it's been. Yes. I'm the same way. Like, I grew up, like you, yes. reading magazines. I had a subscription to everything, import tuner, sport compact car. Yep. All these different... All magazines. of them, yep. I even had a, um, one to, uh, early on when I first got into it, to... Um, I think it was uh, Auto Center Security. Oh, yeah. 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 Because, because every once in a while, they'd have an import in there, like the editor. So um, so I even did that uh, at, at the time because I wanted to see more import stuff, right? Yeah. But nowadays, if I want information, it's, it's 100% digital. Sure. Like, I don't have the time to sit through a magazine like I used to. I would love to, but I just don't have the time. Sure. You know? and, um, and I think that's why now, like, the coffee table books and the special edition stuff is doing well. Because it's something you, you put out there as a showpiece almost yes. on your coffee table. And when you want to, when you have time, you can look at it. And maybe you never look at it. Maybe yeah, it's you, just you, there. Exactly. You have it though. It's something you can actually hold. Sure. You know what I mean? So, sure. I totally get it. And so when people bring it up, man, don't you, don't you misprint? Of course. Of course. That, that's, what I, that's what I built my career yeah, on. Yeah, I'm with you on that. But I totally understand and I'm not going to fight it. This is what it is. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I wanted to keep delivering the content. So I like telling stories. Um, I like occasionally shooting cars. I like going to events and seeing what's going on. I just want to present that. And so. look, and, and, and not only are you doing that and you're doing that, um, your, your time management skill, your work ethic, uh, the way you carry yourself, you know, like the way you word it is head down, just work, yep. right? Um, that's why you've been able to survive four right. corporate regime regime yeah. changes. And I mean, I didn't survive one, right? Like I got let go. Well, fair I, enough. I'm not even supposed to be here yeah. in this position. I got let go, and they were like, "See ya." Yep. Well, that's it. We're but done. You, but 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 for those those same factors brought ended up having those people want you to come back. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I one of the main reasons I came back is because of Willie Yee, who was who yep. was a, the general manager of the group for for a number of years. Yeah. You know, I I reached out to him when I was at my other job because I was paying attention to the social that yes. was being done, and that's what I did my other job. I'll just tell you that when I was. Um, away from this industry, I was in the social realm. Yes, doing um, strategy and metrics and stuff. So um, that does not sound fun at all. Um, you know what? It it was definitely good to learn because it was key to me coming back to yes. this position. But basically, um, I I emailed Willie and because we were friends too. You know, I yeah. emailed him. I was like, listen, I see what you guys are doing here, but just so you know, you're missing this, this, and this, um, and this could make a big difference for you. And so he emailed me back, and I didn't know if he was going to be like, man, you don't know what you're talking about, yes. or how he was going to be. And he was like very open to it, and he's like, I, I, I like what you're saying. Tell me more. And so we would go back and forth, and then eventually he's like, we might have a position open um, in the new year. Um, you know, it would be great to have you back. And I was like, you know, at what capacity? Like, yes. It depends on what it is. And it was for the content director thing, and, you know, um, I like the idea of it, and I... You know, and I talked it over with, with my wife, and she's like, you need to get back into that because that's what makes you happiest. Yes. Uh, I definitely wasn't happy doing what I was doing. And so um, at that time, I was actually interviewing with another publisher for a similar role um, uh, for an old, old boss who originally brought me into um, my role at Honda Tuning. And um, he was, you know, offering me a position, essentially. I went through, like, five interviews with that company. Okay. And they kind of had me on hold for a minute. And, um, you know, I started interviewing with with Willie and, and this group and um, you know they, they made me an offer and I was like I can't pass this up yes. this is just too good not only was it more money but it was in something that I that I enjoyed yes. it was a whole new challenge yes. it was a completely new challenge and so I came into it just like I'm the new guy like you know what, what you know, what do you want me to do yes and so um, you know it took a couple of weeks to get into the flow and then it kind of just went from there okay so, yeah. I want to I want to talk about this for a little bit so let's go back. Photography. Yep. Right. Obviously, we love cars. Sure. You know, Southern California street car scene. 
we get into it. You, you know, your roommate, camera, da 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 da, Roger has shot. We talked, we touched on all that. Photography got you into magazines, got you into, you jump all the way to now, sure. management. Okay, but here's the question You were not the only one no. who got into photography no way. then. Why? Not only was I not the only one, yes. I wasn't even close to being one of the best. Sure. I was just, sure. I was just a schmuck just doing it. But and, what and I, I want to yeah, know, yeah. what I want to know is if you could objectively kind of deduce, why do you think that you, Matt, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Rogers, a.k.a. Rogers shot, why did you as a photographer um, segue into being something that people wanted? Being something that got you a job, so, why you versus the next guy and the next guy and the next guy? So I've never, I've never asked anybody that I worked for why they would want me. You know what I mean? I've never had that conversation. I'm like, yes. I don't know why? I've never even asked Willie like, why'd you bring me back? But he's mentioned before that he knew of my work ethic as the editor yes. of Honatinian. So I think probably that translates in whatever I'm doing. Yes. Um, but I'm talking 15 years ago, yeah, 17 years ago. Yeah, I think probably with the photography thing, like the way that I got in originally is, like I said, I was taking pictures of friends' cars, putting them on Honda Tech, and people were liking those, right? They call them spotlights. Like sure, spotlight, I remember that. OPZG or whatever it is. Yep. Right? People were digging it. So the editor of Honda Tuning at that time, Dan Frio, and his guy, um, Drew Barrios, yes. they reached out to me and they were like, hey, would you want to ever shoot? From just from seeing it on the forum. Yeah, they actually DM'd me through, or what do we call it, PM back PMs, then. PMs, yeah. yeah. PM back then. Yeah, Drew's um, the one who wrote my feature that you shot. Right. I remember and, that. And Drew was like, listen, would you ever be interested in, in shooting for Honda Tuning Magazine? I didn't even know he was part of that book. And I was sure. like, why is this guy even asking me this? Like, what, why does he care? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, yeah. Sure, whatever. And he's like, um, you know, call this number or whatever. I, I talked to the, the editor and he's like, you know, find a car for us. We like the cars you're, you're, you're covering on Honda Tech. Yeah. Find a car for us, and then let's get it into Honda Tuning. And I was like, wow, okay. Yeah. So um, I think I reached out to um, the editor with photos of my friend um, Noel's uh, Del Sol. Del Sol. Yeah, Trouble Del Sol, because yeah. it was very complete. He had everything. Yeah. And still, in my opinion, one of the best Del Sols, right? And so I was like, I'll shoot this car for you if you want. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. We never get Del Sols. Let's do yeah. it. Borrowed Lloyd's camera. Did the whole shoot one night. Um, maybe over two nights, I don't remember. Um, turned those photos in, like on a disc, right? I, I mailed it to him, right? Because that's what you did back then. You put them on a, on a CD. And mailed them. You, you physically mailed them. Right? Yeah. Because we weren't doing it. There was no retransfer or anything, right? So I sent it over to him. And I think, I'm so stupid. I think I must have called him maybe nine times a week later. Yeah. Because I figure, you know, I tracked it. And I go, it, it, it had to have got to him by now. Right? Yeah. So I probably called him nine times. And just like, hey, Kate, how's it going, man? Like, super nervous. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Matt. Uh, uh, you know, we talked. Uh, you know, it's super nervous. Yeah. Like, I just want to make sure the photos are good, you know, whatever. Was well, he like, dude, leave me alone? I think he was traveling. And uh-huh. I was calling the work. Oh, phone. you were leaving voice messages. Yeah, like voice messages. And so then finally, I was like, maybe this is not going to happen, you know? Sure. They're not getting back. And I don't want to keep bugging him. So I was like, oh, whatever. And it, like I said, I was working a regular job. And so. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I get a call one day, and he's like, hey, man, sorry for the late response. Like, I've been, you know, traveling here or there or whatever. And he's like, these photos are great. He's like, they're going to be in whatever issue it is. And I was just like... Just like that? I was just like, oh, my God. In my head, I was yeah. like, oh, holy shit, this actually is happening. And yeah. I was like, all right, sounds good, man. Play it cool. He's like, sounds good, you know, whatever. I didn't even expect to get paid. Sure. And then he's like, you got to fill up this form, and then we'll get you, get you paid when it comes out. And I was like, all right, cool. And so then it just kind of took off from there. Like, you know, after that came out... Um, I think Noel called me and he's like, "Dude, it's on the it's on the um, the newsstand now." And I was driving home from work and uh, and I rushed to the bookstore to try to find it and they didn't have it. And a couple of days later, they did have it. and I bought like five copies. Yeah. Oh yeah. For it's sure. My first one. Right? For so, sure. Yeah. So it was a big deal, and I was just like, I don't even know who to tell. Like, what, I, I didn't. I was like out of control, you know. So I think I told Opie and. Um, a few others like, dude, this thing actually went to print. Like, Noel's car is in a magazine right now. And that, dude, that was so yeah, huge. Yeah, and I think Loy, I told Loy, and Loy was like, holy shit. Because Loy, Loy helped build that car, right? Like, okay. That sport car motion, him and John Rusikov. And so we were just like, this is crazy. Like, yeah. one of our friends has their car in a, an actual magazine. In an actual car. print magazine, yeah. So, and it was Noel, who's like the most humble guy. Dude, no, it's super so, cool guy. He's like the nicest guy. And, um, yeah, so I was pretty pumped on that for a while. And I remember bringing the issue with me to my regular job. And I just put it like on the desk next to where I was working <laughs> because that served as like 
this is like another avenue of something like I need to really press and get get further with. Yes. But I still have to do this. You yes. Know what I mean? So um, over time, you know, I was getting paychecks and like I was using that money to buy more camera equipment. Yes. And to build my Civic at the time. Yes. And it was like this um, additional income and it was like, dude, I, I'm so, I was so happy to have more money coming yeah. in because I wasn't making a lot of money at my, yeah. at my gig. It was, it was okay. And then, um, yeah. And so... Um, I was working in the federal student loan industry. Yep. And then um, I got to um, a position where I was making a lot of money in that industry. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, I got to make a decision now because I have to put more time and energy toward this this job because there's a lot of money involved. But um, the decision was ultimately made for me because the government took that program away. Oh. So that industry sank and it was gone. And I was like, well, there's I guess, that. I guess I'm a freelancer now. Yeah. And by then I was writing too and I had more gigs and more than enough money to support me not being married, you know? And, yes. And so, um, yeah, so I was just a full-time freelancer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I remember those days. It was great. I mean, waking up at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, 10, man. 10, 30, whatever. And you get to go out, shoot cool cars, get yeah. something to eat. Yeah, I would, I would work until like 3 in the morning. Yep. Because, you know, you, you, there's no hours. You just do whatever you want. Yeah. It was, it was like, I'm very happy I lived that part of my life where yeah. I was completely 100% free. Yeah. I didn't have any kind of... Nothing. I had. I didn't have any debt. Yes. No kids. No yeah. wife. I was just living. Yeah, you know, man. It's great. It's great yeah. to have no, yeah. uh, no responsibilities yeah. in that sense. Yeah. For a little while, anyway. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Good phase of your life. For sure. And uh, you know, and so that photography led up to everything. And and you know, there you go. The work ethic, man. Yeah, I think it was that. I mean, I was uh, probably very, very annoying to the editors because I was constantly pitching. Like that was my thing. Like it's a numbers game, right? If I if I see a car I like, I see a big Mike's car, I'm like, you know what, this would make a good feature. Okay. I throw it out there and they're like, eh, it's okay, we don't want that. And then I, I just kind of like, all right, and I, I sulk about it. Yeah. Nothing's going to get done. For sure. But if I throw them your car yes. and seven others, yes. and they're like, all right, well, we'll take big Mike's and we'll take these three. Yes. That's four, four yes. shoots I've got. I didn't even finish those shoots and I was already pitching more. So I was constantly on the hunt. So you were proactive. You were on the hunt. No, I was so, annoying. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm but so that's annoying. all part of work ethic, yeah. knowing how to get it going, man. I, I felt like I was annoying. But then when I became an editor, I realized how good it was to have people pitching. So you have yes. variety, right? Yes. So they probably got, I would imagine, a little bit annoyed because I was always like contacting them. Hey, just so you know, I've got these five cars yes. lined up. I can shoot them anytime you want. No, but yeah. you know what though? Even if they were annoyed, they're always going to be like, if we need something, your yeah. name would have been ingrained already. Yeah. And I think that kept me working regularly. Like with Aaron Bump, I was doing like probably shooting three cars a month and maybe writing four. Yeah. Like that. So it was like regular income. Dude, as a freelancer, that's good money. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially at that time. Oh yeah. And then, um, you know, I did some work with um, non-source entities like yes. um, C16 Magazine. Um, I was over there for a little bit yeah, and some stuff with them. Yep. Um, the guy that owned that brand for a while became sort of like a mentor. He was like kind of just showing me the ins and outs of stuff. And he's the one that really got me into writing. And um, he, big time business guy, like he had done stuff in the, in the music world before. He's like probably just playing around with the car stuff okay. or whatever. But he uh, definitely showed me some things that I, I wasn't aware of and like how to sort of like sell yourself a little bit without going overboard. Okay. Because I was doing an amateur style like just take all these features, you know, I've got everything you need. And it was really corny. Um, but he just kind of like, look, just calm down. Do it this way. Slow yeah. down a little bit. Think about what you're doing. Um, don't, you know, it's not a numbers game. Slow down a little bit. And he was right. And and he definitely tailored what I was doing. Yeah. And then it came a little bit more professional and less like this, you know, this asshole in San Diego just constantly bothering us, you know. You know, the thing, the thing that we're talking about here, the whole work ethic thing, man. I mean, one of the things that I really always talk about to any of the listeners, man, is that you can have all of the connections. Right. You can have, uh, forget connections, man. The, the word that everyone loves now is passion. Sure. If you have passion, you're fine. That is the most romanticized, unrealistic statement ever. Because yeah, there is um, a lot of people who have passion. Yeah, I think um, it's funny because I, I, I agree 100%. I get it though. I, I, I do understand what you're saying. Like, the passion is very, very important. Yes. You can tell somebody that's not passionate about something. Yes. They're trying to sell you on something, right? The solar panel guy down the street. Yes. When you go to Costco, he's probably not very passionate about solar no. panels. No. But if you talk to somebody like like uh, like a fabricator, yes. they're like all in. Yes. They'll talk your ear off. So, and it feels genuine. Yes. I understand the passion part of it, but I, it might just be because I'm older. Yes. You know? But if you don't have the hard work part of it, Dude, you're you're very very limited. And I'm not saying you won't succeed. I'm yes. just saying beware. Yes. 
there's somebody else out there that wants to eat your lunch. I'm just, I'll just say it that way. Correct. There's always somebody else. And that's yes. why when I was, I hate using the term coming up, but I, when I was in this, like, this journey or whatever, yes. um, early on especially, I never, ever turned down an assignment. I did not care what it was. Yes. Like, if it was a car I didn't like, sure, whatever. Yes. The neon lights, I don't care. Whatever you want, I'm going to give you 110%. Yes. Let's, let's go right now. So, Dude, the, yeah. you were willing to work and outwork. Right. Okay. Right. That, that was my goal is like, while the other guys are sleeping, I'll be up until three working. Yes. That was my whole thing. Like guys that go to the gym and they try to outwork each other, right? It was that type of mentality. But it's weird because the times when I was starting to become like, like in this kind of immersed in this world, there were guys that were, that I looked up to that were way better. Um, and some of them gave me advice. Some of them were like, you know, get away from me. But like Steve, Steve Dimmitt was a big influence. Yes. Like who, he passed away not too long ago. Yes. But Steve Dimmitt was a huge influence because he was such an outside the box thinker. Okay. He was light years ahead of everybody else in terms of his vision. Okay. No one could match what he was doing because he just thought of different stuff. He thought different. And when you talk to him, he's super humble, but you could tell there was something else there. Like he always was just thinking, do it this way because no one else is doing it that way. Yes. And everyone copied his style. And I remember that distinctly. I wanted to not do anything he was doing because it, it was so like, it was just his. It was personal, yeah, man. You know? I mean, that's the whole like as 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 broad of a statement as it is. That's why the entire thing is. I keep talking about is thinking bigger. Sure. I mean, it seems so simple. You right. tell somebody work harder, sure. Think bigger, sure. Right. But no, no, no. I'm serious, man. Because everyone's limitations is in their mind, right? right? And, and the passion thing is a beautiful thing to have. But I'm always talking about having the drive, which is that work sure. ethic, and then being focused. Like, you got to be so focused that some people, you lose friends. You end up being kind of considered a weirdo even. But if, if you don't have those three together, if you don't have that passion and that, that drive and that focus, the, 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 the individuals aren't enough. They need to be together. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, what I'm doing right now is, is not... It's not 100% stable, right? Nothing really is. Sure. This this industry is super unstable. Yes. So it might be tomorrow and they'll be like, all right, well, we're done with you. You're, you're, you're done here. Okay. So if that's the case, then I've got to apply the passion, quote unquote, yes. passion, but also the work ethic on something else. And no, because a work, okay, look, passion will come and go, right? right? There will be, there was that time which you learned these metrics and analytics right. and everything and you were not passionate about that, right. but you took the one thing that will always work no matter what and that is your work ethic, right. applied it, and which you ne- you couldn't necessarily have foreseen is that that ended up being a vital piece of learning for sure for you to end up being where you are now. For sure, 100%. Right? 100%. And, and so, and so I, I think that that's an amazing testament because the one thing that cannot go out of style, it can never do you wrong, is working harder sure. than everyone around you. Sure. Like, I would rather take the guy whose entire goal is, look, man, I don't know anything about any of this stuff, but I will study, learn, and work harder than everyone around me. That guy is way more valuable than the guy who wants to talk to you about cars all day because he loves them. Right. Because he's right. passionate. Right. That if you don't know how to focus that and channel that, it's 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 not... Dude, you remember the mega car meets Burbank Krispy Kreme? Oh, yeah. 2,000 cars? Every single person there is passionate. Sure, yeah. And... What do you do with that if you don't channel it? Right. There's just a bunch of people in a parking lot. Yeah, and I see, I see people now, like, um, you know, in terms of work ethic, I think I'm attracted to that in terms of how people um, present their brand, their personal brand, right? So I see a lot of guys now, like, on YouTube. Okay. Like, they, like, their work ethic, in my opinion, is unbelievable. Like, guys that are... Cranking out that much content? It and it's stuff that, like... They, they're they measuring what their fans like and they're appealing to that and they're like just pumping this stuff out. I'm like, dude, the hours they put into it is incredible. So I, I definitely really respect guys. And I, I think in the last year or so, I've really gotten into YouTube for some reason. Like, okay. Before no, I, it's definitely got a re, a re push. Yeah, it's coming about, back. I'm not sure what it is. There's something about it. Like before, you know, people are like, hey, do you follow so and so? I don't do that. If I need something from YouTube, I'll go to it. Yes. But now I've got a whole list of characters that I follow because I find them very interesting. I see. And so when I see them pumping out videos, I'm like, yeah, sorry, I'm a little tired. I was editing all night. It's like, damn, like that, that's hardcore, man. Okay, look, so for the sake of conversation on that, I do agree, right? But what scares me is, is that what a lot, if you, dude, they've done polls of adolescents. Right. 
90% of them say they want to be an influencer. Sure. They want to be a YouTube yeah, my star. My son talks about it all the time. Okay, and how old is your son? Five. Five, yeah. okay. So what I'm trying to say is, is what they don't understand is is the rate at which you have to put out content. That's no joke, man. But the amount of effort it takes to create a small piece of right. content is massive. It is. Yeah. So unless you get to a point where you can afford to or choose to uh, pay people to either do it for you or help you as far as on the back end, a lot of these people don't understand it's, it is not an 8 to 5. It is a 16-hour a day for like months. Dude, it's, it's crazy. It, it's insane. because People know, think that it's just let me take a selfie talk and then you'll blow up. It is not how well, that I've, works. I've, you know, I've played with video a little bit here and there um, over the years and it takes forever. Like yeah. anything, anything you do it takes so long to do. So like I said, man, with those YouTube channels, those guys are, they're like so dedicated. And I think maybe that's why I've started getting more into it because I see what they're doing. I'm like, man. Like, well, there's the ones that are dedicated and then there are the ones that are dedicated. I... I'm not trying to be the guy to say it, but look, dude, there's ones that are dedicated for the quote unquote right reasons. Sure. And then there are the ones who are dedicated off of 100% pure narcissism. Yeah, but that's for, that's always been that way, right? We, we saw guys in the forum back in the day that would just constantly post pictures of, of stuff they got and maybe not, never even put it on the car. So they could get the comments like, you're the shit, like, Damn, you're amazing. You're yeah. the Mugen King. Like, All right, man. Oh, you know, if that's what you want. You know what I mean? So... We saw that before, so that's not brand new. It is sure. now. It's right in front of your face. Yes. And it's digital, so it's always available. It's always available, so. and it's instantaneous. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so that that's an interesting thing, man, to see because you're 100 percent right. That stuff. Uh, uh, that yeah, that stuff's been there, been there forever, you know. Um, but look, dude. Um, we talked about the the SI, the TL, the Pilot, the Element, the DA, the S2000. And then the last one, this we got to touch on the last right, one, the last which one. you guys, all of this, I will show you in the behind the scenes vlog, but the last project. Yep. So this is the one, my newest one. Um, basically this car, this is a 92 Civic VX. Okay. So this is a car that Charles True bought when he was the editor of Import Tuner. Yes. He bought it to turn it into like an MPG project. Yes. Um, it was sponsored by Falcon mm -hmm. and they basically came out with this Eco Run tire it was supposed to be better for MPG, which I believe it was. And they lightened the car. They kept the VX motor, but made it more efficient. Yes. And dude, I think they made like almost 100 horsepower, which is a lot for a VX. For sure. It, it dynos like 60 or something. But anyways, they did all that and they lightened it and they did, you know, they did this whole like story arc on it and it, it was successful. Yes. After Import Tuner got shut down, or actually even before that, um, they put it in storage. It's just been there ever since. It was there for like six years or something. Um, my boss asked, he goes, Hey, I, I think someone's interested in that car. I was like, dude, I forgot it even existed. He's like, can you go check on it to make sure that, you know, it's, it's in decent condition. So I went to the storage. This is when I had full access before we got rid of the storage, but I went to the storage place. We have all these other cars, Yeah. dug it out. I was like, dude, the car's really, really straight. I think maybe I might want it. And he's like, well, if you want it, you know, you can just buy it from the company. Yeah. And it was like too cheap to pass up. Sure. I, just, I ended up buying it. Um, yeah, so it's mine now. So, and this uh, is what you were telling me. This is your therapeutic build. It is. Yeah, this is the car that I get to work on um, usually on Sundays. Um, it's kind of like, you know, when my my wife spends time with her friends. Yes. That's kind of her getaway. Yes. My time away is like right there. On, you know, just playing tinkering with that thing. So, um, when it was still at the office, I brought it back to like where our tech center is. I pulled the motor out. I stripped it out completely clean. Yes. Took it to DTM Auto Body, and then Long and those guys did a great job color changing it. And so now it's khaki. Mm -hmm. uh, no more half blue, half white, um, which I, I just I didn't like it at all. For right? sure. So I didn't like it. So I wanted khaki because it's just something different. It's yeah. very um, very mute. Yes. Whatever colors you put are going to pop on it. Yes. And so, um, yeah. So I've just been working on this for a little bit now. Yeah. You guys, it's going to be really fun to show you all of these, especially because out of all of the builds, I mean... The Integra is is very thorough in its own right, but the the hatch is is a different kind of thorough. It's it's effectively ground up. It's off yeah. the ground right now. Yeah. Full entire color, new undercoating. You guys, it's in a great transitional period. There's no power plant in it. The interior's gutted out. He got an almost brand new dash. All of these things, I'm you know, it's going to be so much better for you guys to be able to see them. Yeah, it's one of those things. Like I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. I think I just I needed something. To take my mind off of stuff. And yeah. it was like, that was the best way to do it. Yeah. And like my passion, we're using the word passion again, but like my, 
my passion in, in um, cars right now is probably like the highest it's ever been for some reason. Okay. And I'm not sure what that is, but I just want to do everything here in the garage, like get as much done as I can. And um, there's no timeline for it. There's no like, oh, I'm going to have this done by this time. For this or for that. I'm just going to just do it. No, that's, that's it. awesome, man. And that's the best way. Yep. I know that it's hard to, to, to really apply that in the real world, maybe especially for a younger demographic because there are uh, races or shows at, or both. Uh, or something that right. they're trying to get it out for because, you know, there's nothing wrong if you're able to just own it and say that you want other people's attention. No, you, other, yeah. no nothing wrong with that. Everyone no. wants to uh, roll up to a, a show, a meet, or whatever, and have people be like, that's sick, right? right. For me, I'm, I'm a little bit different uh, in, in that way. That, like, I, I don't really want that much attention. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that is, what that's about, but I don't know if I'll ever take it to a show or a meet. Um, I would like to put on the track and have some fun. Yeah. With it. But again, there's no. no but look, dude, as someone who's known you and someone who has seen, to be blunt, times of your life where you were, dude, I mean, even still now, there's t- there's days where you're jaded. Yeah. You know, it's For work sure. and you're like, dude, I White. fucking, I'm White. just, I don't want to think about cars yeah. right now, right? right? But to see these um, from the era of our younger days and then. For you to to actually have a light in your eyes, there's light in your eyes. You're having fun. Yeah. It's not just therapeutic, which has a, a a certain tone to it, but it's literally a passion project yeah, and sure. no pace, no deadline. No, and I'm fortunate too because you know I've had I've, I have people helping me out with, with some of the parts too. Like, yeah. Um, you know, David at Hybrid Racing, like I told him about the car, and he's like, "Let me know what you need." And so okay, you know, David and those guys like they sent over a bunch of stuff you know, from hybrid to, to make this thing and then, oh, to make uh, the K plant power plant work. Yeah, yeah. you know, like a new shifter, their, yeah. their, their V three shifter and stuff. So they have some cool stuff. And then like um, you know, the guys at AFHK parts. Yeah, they they sent over a whole package of OEM stuff that I need, like sensors and stuff. Um, you know, so there's there's a bunch of people that are helping me out. Now, see, that's and, cool, man. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, it's it's great to see that because there there were times where I, I saw that the the light was no longer in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, just you know. It, it just happens sometimes. You've been doing yeah. for so long. You know? But it's back. And like you just yeah. said earlier, you're like, for whatever reason, it's back and yeah. you're embracing it. Yeah. And it's great to see all these cars. I can't wait to show the listeners. Yeah, it's funny. Like a year ago, like maybe like two years ago, I'd be like, damn, I got to, you know, I got to chop out a bunch of metal to fit this radiator. Like, I don't want to do that. It's right. Gonna take me, it's going to take me hours. Right. Now, like, I was just like, yeah, let's go. You know, I was, yeah. I was on out the halfway through. I'm like, I'm almost done. What else can I cut? You know what I mean? That's so, awesome, you know, man. Yeah, it just, it's one of those things where, um, it's reignited for sure. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm happy to see that. And uh, in, in in what you're what you're creating, yep. it's going to be you know something that I think a, a whole lot of people are going to be able to appreciate yeah. for a variety of reasons. I mean, um, the 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 Integra is it it's borderline perfect, man. Yeah. With the understated, uh, you know, you've got the Japanese spec X, Y, and Z. Right. It's Roll still- up. Someone's going to listen and be like. Oh wait, what? What's yeah. under the hood? And when they see it, it's still you know it's still rough around the edges. Like you know, like window molding stuff you can't buy anymore is, is you know that's hard, especially yeah, with new paint. Yeah, it's hard to see it. I know. You know, that, it's that, hard. That kills me, but but overall, it's just going to be a street street. Wait, record. but on the hatch though, you were able to get all kinds of moldings. Yeah, the car's new enough; you can still get stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, I remember buying uh, for my hatch. You know, I remember doing when window sill moldings. Yeah. You're like. That's expensive. Dude, the Prelude, a lot of the stuff I had to buy from Honda Vintage. Right. Dude, I remember one time when I bought brand new carpet, it was like 700 bucks. Yeah. And I was like, um, okay. Yeah. And I bought it, you know? But um, it's part of the process. It's sure. really, really cool. Because you have these, these different eras. A, a, a TL, a 2018 Civic Si, which people from our generation are like, they fuck the it, new right? ones. Oh, they yeah. But so then, you have all but those. Then you get into that thing, or at least the, I got into it. Yeah. And it's like, it's fun. It's a fun car. Sure, sure, you know sure. I mean? It's not a hatchback. No, like all the people who, let's talk about cars that people want to hate, the new Civic Type R. Sure. I don't like the way it looks. It's too big. And then people drive it and they're like, oh, wait a minute. I, did, I drove it for two weeks. I fell in love with it. I thought it was a great car. Yes. Um, the look is a little too wild for me personally. Sure. I wouldn't want to drive it every day because of the look. But yeah. But dude, that car is fun. Dude, everyone fun. who has one or has driven driven one is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a sturdy, fun car. Yep. So, you know, you have all these different generations, styles, wheel bases, trim levels. It's pretty cool to see. Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. All wheel drive. Yeah, yeah man, you have it all, dude. Yeah. I, I think it's a great thing to, to have become your friend. And, and then work with you. Yeah, uh, so sure. we have social and business ties over now 
uh, borderline 20 years. Crazy. Right? Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a long time. And, um, you know, so uh, I attribute a lot to you, especially with allowing me to end up segueing into writing yeah, you know for sure, man. that was a beautiful thing and then uh you know the builds we've all kind of learned from each other inspired each other super cool man um i can't wait to show people yeah um you know the the feedback from this podcast episode is going to be great but i mean you guys uh thank you for listening there's so much more there's going to be a part two i know there is to this conversation with matt but um you know that's what it's all about you know i always i'm always pushing community I'm always pushing culture, and I don't really know why, when, or how, but it became a thing where that's like what I'm all about now, man. Yeah. I want to see the the culture that we grew up loving deeply. Sure, right? Yeah. It's not. I mean, it was not a fad. You know, we're forties, fifties. Some of us are. You know, like uh, Ryan from iBox, like a hundred. Yeah. Right. God, dude, you and him. Yeah. You're like it was seventy nine. He's a hundred. Um. You know, we live and breathe it in a very real way. Yeah. And um, I, I want to promote and, and have dedicated the Think Bigger Project as a company, as a brand, and as a nonprofit, and then the podcast to literally being a way to help guide it in what I believe to be a positive direction. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. To promote, uh, you know, community. Yeah. Right? Sure. And so uh, I appreciate you being uh, here on the podcast for the community conversations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I know there's going to be another part, the vlog for people. Yeah, to anytime, see. man. I'm, you Dude, know, it's going to be amazing. Well, it's not very close. I'm not around the corner because uh, we're pretty far from each other. Yeah, but, but yeah, hey, anytime. man, uh, I don't care. It was worth it, dude. Yeah. So I uh, appreciate you, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks yeah, for absolutely. Thank you for being on, you guys. Uh, you guys, I always promote that you guys interact, you know. So after you listen, take the time to comment. I'm going to tag um, uh, his personal page which is it's actually called too many builds yeah, so, yeah look so, you guys will be able to see a lot of this right, on his ig I, I don't um i don't get too crazy with that page but i do update it regularly and sure whatever i'm tinkering with yeah um my my personal page is more like family stuff so i, I keep it private yeah i'm not hiding anything i just keep it private but no but the too many like, builds is a good one they can see these little nuances yeah yeah so if i'm out here and i'm and i'm working on something i usually take a couple of photos and just throw it on there and, yeah and um i just opened it like recently i just started yeah it. i figure it's a good way to like talk about cars without talking someone's ear off you know what i mean so yeah you guys i'm gonna tag that you can see some of that uh it'll be much more thorough in the behind the scenes vlog that i'm gonna put out with him on and you'll be able to see all of them but um you know t you know there's a lot of stuff that you guys have grown up reading that he has directly had something to do with so we've got a a, a lot of uh debt to matt it's so weird to hear but yeah uh, and 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 you know his, his the people like willie that he mentioned all these other names these are people who are not just part of the industry they help make it what it is to be very honest with you and uh, it's a it's a big honor to be able to know that i've been a part of that yeah. um not Definitely. just as an enthusiast right pretty damn cool man so you guys matt community conversations all of that please follow too many builds You'll see some of the stuff. Uh, comment. I always, if you guys are, are listening or watching on YouTube, comment um, and on Instagram. Share the podcast if you think anyone else needs to hear this. It's um, it's an honor to be able to bring uh, pioneers and positive individuals to you guys here on the podcast. So thank you for listening. Think Bigger Podcast. Matt, thank you for being a guest. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah.